They are some of the most mysterious creatures that live among us. The new National Geographic book, Secrets of the Octopus, offers an unprecedented exploration of our eight armed friends, revealing why these creatures continue to fascinate us. Joining me now is the nationally best-selling author, Cy Montgomery, with more on the book and her research. And Cy, thanks for joining us. I appreciate you wearing a purple color there to match my tie today. Um, the, uh, first question for you. More than one octopus, octopi or octopuses? It's octopuses because yes. I is a Latin ending and octopus is a Greek word. You can really say anything you want, but <laughs> if you want to impress the octopus scientists, say octopuses. Well, uh, what initially drew you to this particular animal? They live in the ocean and I've uh, you know, looked at so much of your work. You've interacted with so many different types of animals, but what is so special about octopuses? Well, you know, I'd done maybe 30 books at the time that um, I, I began my research, was, which was in March of 2011. But all of my animal friends, well, most of them were terrestrial and many of them were vertebrates, mm -hmm. you know, backbone animals who live on the land. But most animals on the planet are actually living in the sea and they're invertebrate animals with no backbones like octopuses and I felt like I needed to get to know someone like this. And the octopus has really a remarkable nervous system. They don't have a central brain like we have and yet they're very intelligent, aren't they? Oh my gosh, what is so wild about these animals is that you'd have to go to science fiction or outer space to find something more different from a human. You know, they have no bones, they 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 breathe water, they're their central brain is actually like a donut around their neck. They can change color and shape. They have venom, they have ink. They can pour their boneless bodies through tiny openings. And yet they can solve some of the same problems that we can. They enjoy playing with the same toys our children like. Oh, wow. Like and Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> and you can be friends with an octopus. And they do and learn, correct, yep. Cy? They're, they're, capable of lear they're capable of learning. Oh, they're certainly capable of learning and remembering. They like puzzles. They remember individual faces. The octopuses who I knew quickly learned who I was. We have tested this um, scientifically at other aquaria that they definitely recognize individual faces. And the ones who I knew got to know me and when I would lift open the, the lid to the tank, they their eyes would, would look right into my face. They'd turn bright red with excitement, <laughs> come flowing wow. over and then their arms would come boiling up out of the water as if to say, hello, I would <laughs> like a hug. And then they would cover my skin with their soft questing suckers. Oh, and I would that have sounds to nice. I came home from Boston covered with hickeys. <laughs> That's a good story, even if it weren't true, Cy. All right, uh, real true. quickly, <laughs> real quickly here, just in 10 seconds, uh, tell us about your new book and where folks can get it. Well, it's called The Soul, The Secrets of the Octopus, and it should be available in all stores pretty much everywhere, secretsoftheoctopus.com. And there is a companion film that National Geographic is showing on Earth Day with amazing footage of these animals that everyone will love. All right. Well, it's fun looking at them, Cy. We appreciate you sharing your uh, experiences with these wonderful creatures, the mollusks, the octopuses. If nothing else, we've learned how to properly refer to them in the plural. Cy, again, thanks for joining us and uh, keep up the great work there helping uh, conserve these animals.